welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 on Channel's television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. President Muhammadu Buhari apologizes to Abiola family 25 years after annulment of the June 12th presidential election confers on him the highest honor in the land. Southwest states hold memorial rally in honor of late Chief MKO Abiola as they unanimously commend President Buhari for righting the wrongs of the past. Court sentences former Plateau State Governor Joshua Dari to 14 years in prison for criminal breach of trust and criminal misappropriation of state funds. And U.S. and North Korea revive long-lost friendship following historic meeting in Singapore where pledges were made for nuclear disarmament. CV.com has more information for you and on youtube.com forward slash channels web you can watch our videos. You can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the Channel CV app for Android, iOS and Windows devices from their respective stores. Besides giving you access to news updates on the go, the Channel TV and Channels 24 app have an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and then follow the instructions. Well, let's take a closer look at the June 12 celebrations today. And joining me to discuss events on this historic day is a historian and elder statesman, Professor Banji Akintoye. Thank you so much for joining us on the News at 10, Professor. Thank you. Uh, it was such an emotional day for so many reasons, particularly when um, Hafsat Abiola spoke. There were a lot of, um, many eyes were not dry in the room. How do you react to this honor today? I think it's a wonderful thing to happen. Uh, we, it's for all Nigerians, not just the Southwest. But I need, uh, it needs to be added that uh, we in, uh, in the Southwest have never uh, given up celebrating uh, June 12. Mm. We have never since 1993. Uh, and we had hoped that Nigeria would finally see the injustice in what was done on that day and uh, rectify it. So we're grateful that uh, President Buhari has taken the step to rectify it. It's been long overdue, mm -hmm. but it's better that it has now come. So for you, is this closure, I mean, does this put an end to the acrimony that was associated with, with June 12th? No, it doesn't, because um, a very strange uh, precedent was created that can be repeated in the future. The idea of uh, annulling an election in which the people had voted massively and peacefully uh, and giving no reason for it, no real reason, uh, lives on the records of our country. Uh, a terrible stain that can re-emerge someday. You can have a situation, either a repeat of what happened, or a repeat of the reverse, which is that somebody who thinks he has the power could declare some, uh, a loser in an election actually the winner. Mm. In short, we in this country have to find some way to to remove this stain from from the records of our his, of our history of our of our land. And speaking about that, let me draw your attention to what the son of Ghani Fawemi had said, Mohammed um, Fawemi, at, at um, that event today. He asked all politicians to accept defeat in good faith instead of turning to hate. So, I mean. Do you think that advice is going to be taken, seeing no. that we're moving into 2019? No, I don't think we who are, who are uh, relations and friends and supporters of, our, of uh, MKO uh, hate anybody. We don't hate anybody. It's not a question of hate. It's a, uh, we are building a country. A country is a piece of architecture. Mm. And it, uh, if you don't set it up right, if you don't do it right, it will come crumbling someday. Mm. We cannot have this type of record on our history. 
And I think one of the ways in which it, we can rectify it, it, it does, some people will say, oh, that doesn't have any much effect. I think we should, uh, we should include Abiola's name on the list of our former presidents. Mm. That will go somewhere. It will show that, in fact, nobody can annul an in, a Nigerian election. Mm. Nobody can handle it the way it was handled in 1993. Yeah. But Professor Shoyinka talked about a hall of shame um, beyond honoring those who um, were, were, were dishonored, <laughs> let me say, at that time. <laughs> what do you think about that? Yeah, I, yeah I, I wouldn't go so far mm -hmm. as to support uh, the idea of a... Nigeria should not have a, a hall of shame. Mm -hmm. uh, but Nigeria needs to make the point very clearly Someday, a resolution of the National Assembly, mm. uh, some sort of powerful statement that totally rejects what happened on, uh, in, in uh, 1993, June 12, uh, the, the annulment of the election, uh, and uh, establishes that this will never be done in the history of in the future in our country. But well, is the apology not enough? Because that apology by the president to the Abiola family was a significant moment today. And then you saw the apology from Hafsat as well. The apology, so, the apology was good. Yeah. It was well, it is welcome. But uh, including Abiola. Uh, 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 MKO's uh, name on the list of former presidents of Nigeria uh, will, do, will go a longer way than a mere apology. Mm. Will go a longer way. Yeah. There's, yeah, finally, now before we go, there has been criticism of this administration in terms of the why, uh, the timing, why, why now, and um, the motive. Even though on a day like this we, we remember June 12 fondly, um, what, what, what advice would you give to the administration? Uh, people say, oh, this was done because the elections are coming and the president is looking for electoral support and so on. Why not? That's how politicians behave uh, in every country in the world. The important thing, however, is that President Buhari needs to recognize that this doesn't remove a whole lot of grievances in the land. Mm. People are still being killed in this country. Our country is being governed by a system that rejects the nature of our country. Nigeria cannot be governed by a unitary system of government. If people gather in Abuja and make decisions for every part of Nigeria, it won't, it won't work. It's not working, and it will never work. And if it is not rectified, the anger and bitterness that could develop from it can break up this country. We need to be very careful about that. And Buhari is in a position to do it if he would do it. If he would do it, he would... Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of us who now reject him totally may, in fact, turn around and begin to look at him uh, favorably again. All right. Historian and elder statesman, Professor Banji Akintoye, thanks for sharing your thoughts on a historic day like this Thank on the you. News at 10 tonight. Thank you. And away from June 12 stories, an Abuja High Court has sentenced the former governor of Plateau State, Mr. Joshua Darie, to 14 years in prison without an option of fine for criminal breach of trust and misappropriation of one billion naira ecological fund belonging to the Plateau State government. Justice Ulubu Kola Banjoku convicted the former governor of 15 out of the 23 counts brought against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission while acquitting him on eight of the charges for want of evidence. The judgment is coming two weeks after the same court sentenced former governor of Taraba State, Mr. Jolly Nyame, to 14 years in prison. Our correspondent, Amaka Ukafo, reports. It's judgment day for former governor Joshua Dari of Plateau State, whose trial began on the 15th of July 2007. An Abuja High Court has sentenced him to 14 years imprisonment for criminal misappropriation and two years for criminal breach of trust. The former governor, who is now a service senator, was arraigned on the 23 count chart of criminal breach of trust and misappropriation while he was governor of the Plateau State between 1999 and 2007. In the judgment, which lasted over seven hours, Justice Ulubukola Banjuku found Senator Daria guilty on 11 counts charged for criminal misappropriation. She also found him guilty on four counts of criminal breach of trust. The judge have acquitted and discharged the former governor on eight other counts for want of evidence.
Even though the accused pleaded for mercy, Justice Banjoku said appropriate punishment must be handed down as she sentenced him to 14 years each for the four counts of criminal misappropriation and two years imprisonment for criminal breach of trust. The court also directed the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission to return all the funds it recovered in the process of its investigation to the coffers of the Plato State Government. The defense lawyer says he abides by the judgment, except his client decides otherwise. Our client um, will instruct us as to what he wants. We will look at it and advise our client as to whether we should appeal or not. The prosecutor applauds the judgment of the court. We were able to secure conviction. It's a good development. And I hope this will serve as a deterrent to others um, that corruption does not pay. The judgment is coming 10 years after Senator Dairi held sway as governor of Plato State between May 1999 and May 2007. The so question observers are asking is what happens to his seat as senator representing Plato State in the National Assembly? Perhaps the Independent National Electoral Commission will answer this in the coming days. Amaka Okafu, Channel Television News. Staying with legal matters, as part of efforts to strengthen the nation's fight against corruption, the president of the Center for Social Legal Studies, Professor Yemi Akinshaya George, is advocating the speedy trial of high-profile corruption cases in Nigeria. Professor Akinshaya George, while applauding the establishment of the Corruption and Financial Crimes Trial Monitoring Committee by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, explains the need for civil society organizations to stand on the path of justice rather than taking sides with politically exposed persons. He blames the small number of convictions arising from high-profile corruption cases on the poor implementation of the nation's laws. As a country, we, we don't have you know, much problem with you know, passing laws. That's not our problem. We're able to articulate and pass laws, very good laws. But the critical challenge is implementing our laws. You know, to ensure that the benefits intended by those laws are actualized. For example, looking at the Administration of Criminal Justice Act, the objective is to, um, you know, create a system of efficient administration of criminal justice, which protects human rights, protects the society, and protects victims of offenses. To what extent? To what extent? You know, have we have been able? to translate these objectives into practical programs and practical activities. To what extent you know, has the authorities and the powers that be provided the necessary resources for the various agencies of criminal justice administration to enable effective you know, implementation of, these, of the lofty objectives uh, of these laws? When the news at 10 returns, Niger Delta Development Commission inaugurates Malaria Elimination and Research Center in Port Harcourt, River State. Do join us again. One doesn't go to a natural tribunal because one has lost. It's because one, one believes that one, should, one doesn't deserve to lose. Mm -hmm. I mean, one, one needs to look at the circumstances as they arise. I don't think one should try to... Because we would have been talking about, about second ballot and so on. We shall see how things turn out. There must be some NRC everywhere. Mm -hmm. So the fact that some people are NRC does not mean that the people are divided. The whole country is politically divided between us here and everything.